I think still China, because I mean, just if you look at the sheer size of the market, but also at the income evolution, I think there's huge opportunities arising for every retailer. I mean, everybody is jumping on Asia. Everybody is pretty much uh, getting the same economic reasoning and looking into the same spots. And um, so, I mean, it's um, probably the issue of sustainability, not to be too late on the one hand side, but also not to rush too quickly forward in order not to make too many unsuccessful moves. I think to grow gradually, I mean, so really have a, a long-term strategy and thinking about what you want to achieve, but also using an evolutionary approach of trial and error and therefore keeping the flexibility to adapt your expansion strategy. I mean, on the one hand side, it's it's a great tool for retail because I mean now the the consumer can interact with you anytime, anywhere, and um, this offers great opportunities, um, especially for a brand like Victoria Knox, where many of the products I mean have really a deeper meaning, like the functionality, which you don't see just by looking at the product, but to look deeper into it. So as a as a bilateral communication uh, or, or, or two-way communication uh, channel, it's a great tool. But also, on the other hand, uh, I mean, there's the E equation of it, and um, this is for retailers always a, a threat because, I mean, on the one hand, the cake is is growing, but on the other hand, I mean, the the e-commerce business is a quite substantial business today and continues to grow, which puts some more pressure on the bricks and mortar business. I think the customer-centric offerings really come from the service equation. So, being in a one-to-one -one interaction with your with your customer and uh, making of the whole product range the personal offer possible for the customer. Whereas from a product strategy, I think the world is getting smaller. We are seeing more global offerings, global standards, and therefore there, there will always be. A specific regional equation of the product offerings, I think the global equation will become more important. I mean, if, if, if you really give a good experience to your customer, if the, if the, the, if the bricks and mortar store really is a, is a point of interaction with your product, but also with your employees, then I think it's, it's, it's still a bright future. But uh, it might, uh, I mean, the, the bar has just raised, so what you need to achieve in a bricks and mortar store is totally different than 20 years ago. The opportunities for the Chinese markets are definitely the raising uh, wage and salary structure. So there, there is already a huge middle class and uh, I mean, even though their net income seems to be fairly low, if you look at it at purchasing parity, they represent today something like in, in the Western Hemisphere of like $40,000 of, of um, purchasing parity. And um, therefore, th this um, part of the consumer group in, in China will grow the most rapidly. And so the, the, the evolving middle class, I think, is, is a great opportunity for retailers. I like the concept of the World Retail Congress a, a lot. So far I've only been to the World Retail Congress, in, which is happening in Europe. And um, I always found it interesting to exchange ideas, to catch up with the developments of uh, your colleagues and counterparts, but also to do networking. And uh, given by this uh, setup, I think everybody who believes in the concept of the World Retail Congress, when asked to contribute, it's an honor. And so when uh, I was asked if I could uh, contribute here in the Asian Congress, I mean, it was a clear yes from my point because I like the format a lot.